Hey, what's up nerds? So in this video, I'm going to talk about why all of these particular factions got lumped into the Cities of Sigmar book. And to answer that question, we got to go back in time. Back to the old world. We need to explore where the individual armies came from, where the peoples of those armies came from, and how they got to where they are now. So, much as we have currently in Age of Sigmar, uh, in Warhammer Fantasy, in the world that was, we had forces of order, forces of chaos, and... Then they didn't really have a distinction of death and destruction. It was just kind of like people that aren't really aligned with order or chaos. They were kind of like a non-aligned group. But what we're concerned with here are the forces of order. Now, there were six armies that were distinctly, definitely having their flag planted in the forces of order. We had Britonia and the Empire. Those were the two human factions. We had the Dwarves, the now Dwarden and Dispossessed. And then we had three different flavors of Elves. High Elves, Dark Elves, and Wood Elves. Now, all of these factions really kind of fought on the same side, although there was some infighting and such... There were some problems between them. They had some wars between them here and there in the old world. But essentially, the point remains that they were kind of, in the grander scheme of things, all basically on the same side when it came to fighting against the forces of chaos and fighting against, say, ogres invading or uh, you know, the undead invading. They were all kind of on the same side. And when it came time for the end times, they really all banded together to a certain extent and were fighting together for the same cause, to try and preserve the old world. Now, some who know a little bit about this story may say, but Paul... You said there's six. What happened to the Bretonians? Well, they sort of rode off into the sunset during the end times. And we don't really get an explanation of why, in terms of lore, that they did not end up making it to Age of Sigmar. But their kind of capitulation and ride off into the sunset, I would speculate Sigmar might not have been happy with them for kind of fighting and running away. That's purely speculation on my part. Don't know for sure what really happened to the Bretonians and why they're not represented in Age of Sigmar. But that leaves us with the five peoples that uh, Sigmar sort of rescued and brought to the mortal realms. Once again, the Empire, the humans, the Dwarves, now the Dwarden, Dispossessed, the Wood Elves, who were or primarily the Wanderers and some of the Sylvaneth, the Dark Elves, who were primarily Darkling Covens, Daughters of Cain, and a couple of other miscellaneous factions that got lumped in there and we're going to talk about that mess in a second and then the real mess which was the high elves that kind of got their faction fragmented but now in the cities of sigmar book the high elves are really represented by the phoenix temple so these were sort of Sigmar's chosen people that were always the ones fighting on the side of order. And he chose them to reseed the all of those uh all of those species in the mortal realms. 
And until the Age of Chaos, everything was good. They were building cities. They were all working together peacefully. They all kind of evolved in different directions a little bit. The Age of Chaos came, things went sour, and Sigmar closes the gates to Azir, trapping in a lot of these same peoples who had sort of evolved a little bit and uh, broken up into some other subgroups. They weren't really just humans anymore. They were a little bit divided up. They weren't dark elves anymore. They had kind of gotten divided up, etc. So that gives us kind of a framework lore-wise and gameplay-wise of why these people are working together and why they ended up in one book is that they kind of, they, they are basically Sigmar's chosen people to repopulate the mortal realms. And with that, then when he closed the gates to his ear, they were all forced to live and work together in harmony. They all rebuilt their armies together and they're all very much close. They're all working together, although they are still retaining some old grudges, especially the Dwarven, and they like grudges. And they are maintaining some of their distinct flavor that comes from the history of their peoples. So, now, important things to note. Here I'm going to start talking about more of the gameplay aspect of these armies and kind of how everything fits together from the perspective from a historical perspective. Those five legacy armies and what they have now become. And a little bit of the history in Age of Sigmar of how we got from A to B. Because there was some turmoil. We're four and a half years into Age of Sigmar as a game now. And a bunch of stuff has changed. When the game first launched, we basically had those same five books that were our forces of order. And maybe about six months or so into uh, Age of Sigmar as a game, it kind of is a little bit tough because part of the lore of Age of Sigmar is that Age of Sigmar is a time period, and we're also talking about Age of Sigmar as a time period of a game in the real world. It's a little confusing. Anyway, I digress. So, the Order Battle Tome came out. That was the conglomeration of all of the forces of order. Now, a couple of things were noteworthy in this book. First of all, a lot of these factions got broken up and they were made into smaller subgroups and they didn't necessarily all work together in the same way as they previously did. In addition, they left a bunch of stuff out. And they didn't really give us, at the time, a full explanation of why things were left out. Um, there was some speculation that those things were going to be going away. And there was some speculation that they simply weren't rewriting those War Scrolls. And all of those War Scrolls definitely did get a rewrite at that time. Because we didn't have points yet in Age of Sigmar, there was really no reason to not still use all of those forces together. So now we had a bunch of new War Scrolls, some things that were sort of ghettoized and broken into smaller factions. Just real quick, a review of what those factions were, because that initial ghettoization six months into Age of Sigmar, which I just with some speculation here, think they didn't have a whole lot of forethought into how these things got broken up, and some of them got re-reorganized later on. 
But here's basically what happened. The Empire got broken up. We had the Free Guild, which was the standing army components of the Empire. We had the Iron Weld Arsenal, which was all of the artillery and steam tanks and uh, engineers, all of those sorts of people. And they would also be working with the same sorts of folks from the Dwarden. In addition, we got the Collegiate Arcane, which was all of the wizards and magic-related things from the Empire. And then we also got the Devoted of Sigmar, which is basically the religious fanatics that are devoted to Sigmar. Let me take a quick sip of my coffee, because I need my wakey juice. So that was the Empire. That one was relatively simple. Next, we had Wood Elves. And this was probably the simplest one. We had the Wanderers, who were all of the actual elves that were in the world that was. And then they broke out a part of that army that was always distinctly different, and that was the Sylvaneth. That is, all of the tree people that had been working with the elves, now they're kind of going off and doing their own thing. And they became their own fully-fledged army on their own. Next, we have the Dark Elves. They got broken up into a number of smaller factions. So, the two primary chunks were the Darkling Covens, who are very much like the standing army of the Dark Elves. We had the Daughters of Cain, who were the crazy blood cult, Cain-worshipping uh, maniacs that they are, who later got their own book, their own army, and are a distinctly different thing that are... Mm, they're still on the forces of order, but they're really not with Sigmar. And then we had a few other miscellaneous factions that fell out of that. We had the Scourge Privateers and the Order Draconis uh, in particular, as well as, I believe, the Shadow Blades were also knocked out of Dark Elves and into their own little sub-faction. And that brings us to what the fuck happened to the High Elves? So, initially, the High Elves were broken up into a number of different factions. We had the Eldritch Council, which was very magic-oriented. We had, and I'm sorry, I need to rewind, Order Serpentis is Dark Elves. Order Draconis is High Elves. They got their dragons. A little bit confusing because in Order Serpentis, there's also dragons. Anyway. In, in the High Elves, they got broken up, right? We had the Phoenix Temple, the Elders Council, the Order Draconis, and... At the time, I forget what they were calling them, but there was a bunch of other miscellaneous stuff as well. Later on, we got the reboxing of the Island of Blood box, which contained a bunch of High Elf stuff. And that became the Swift Hawk Agents. So that was sort of another sub-faction. That was our first reorganizing of stuff in High Elves that we didn't really previously see. So now we're going to fast forward a little bit more. Well, part of this may be going back. My timeline's a little messed up here. Anyway, one year into Age of Sigmar, we get the General's Handbook. And that gives us points 
for everything. And it gives us our initial Grand Alliance allegiance abilities. So what this does is it's separating things out in terms of points into separate groups. We have the rules kind of separating things out into separate groups. But gameplay-wise, we still really didn't have a reason to not have all of our old Dark Elf models working together. They just had a little bit of disjointed internal synergy. So people could kind of play whatever they wanted. Now, fast forward another year to our second General's Handbook. And what did that do? Well, this is where a lot of things kind of got cemented. We had all of, or I'm not going to say all of, because that is not true, but we had factions that got allegiance abilities that did not previously have them from having their own battle tome, which was pretty much everything in this book. And we had all of those models that had been discontinued and were not originally included in that big order battle tome that had all of the war scrolls in it. Those, their points went away. And now we sort of had this presumption that we weren't really allowed to play with them anymore in match play. So this is where we really had solidified that... These different disparate factions that we had were really separate, concrete, complete armies. Part of the problem of that was a lot of them really weren't complete armies that didn't really work very well. Darkling Covens worked. Free Guild worked. Dispossessed worked. Uh, the Wanderers worked. Sylvaneth got their line expanded and got their own battle tome. Uh, but their own battle tome came a little bit later, but they got expanded. So, we have all of these groups now, and then we have what kind of became known as, like, sub-factions. Factions that either didn't have, like, battle line troops, so you couldn't really play them as an army, or that were things that didn't have their own allegiance abilities. Noteworthy in this is that none of the factions that came out of the High Elves ever got allegiance abilities. That is particularly important. But we did get it for Free Guild, Darkling Covens, Wanderers, Dispossessed no matter how bad some of those abilities might have been. Now, because some of those abilities were pretty bad, despite a lot of people owning these armies, they really tended to stay on the shelf because they simply weren't that good. And because the armies got broken apart and ghettoized, it was hard to play them in the way people wanted to. A lot of people still wanted to basically rebuild the old empire. I was one of them. And now we got to a point where we couldn't really do that anymore. We had the free guild that were the standing troops. Your core troops that were in the empire. But now if we wanted to take wizards or we wanted to take artillery, we had to go in and take them as allies. And it really restricted our ability to have a diverse army that was well-rounded. You couldn't really take wizards and artillery. You kind of had to pick one or the other. And if you did that, some of those things were really expensive, so it degraded your ability to use your core troops very significantly. Also noteworthy in this 
on all of the allies tables, we always had all of the forces of order were able to ally with Stormcast Eternals. That's just sort of a footnote that kind of leads in later. So now this was cemented for, that was two years in and now for another two and a half years or so, that's just the way things were. Those allegiance abilities never really got changed. And a lot of those armies simply for that reason, from that point in time, were really put on the shelf. So we had a two and a half year time period where these armies that many people loved and owned massive collections of didn't really feel like they could play. And if you looked at the tournament statistics, they weren't very good. Um, only Free Guild ever won a GT, and a lot of the others had very poor performance, particularly the Dispossessed were just awful. So what do we do with all of these things? Now we're in the middle of 2019, and we know that a Cities of Sigmar book is now coming. And we have a general idea of what's going to be in it, but we have no idea how all of this is fitting together. So what happens next baffled a lot of people. A ton of models went on the last chance to buy list and then were no longer available in the Games Workshop online store. So this was our sort of first indication that we were getting a shakeup with the Cities of Sigmar book where a bunch more models were discontinued. When we first got our Order Battle Tome, six months into Age of Sigmar, a whole bunch of models were discontinued then, but it took a while for them to really not be playable anymore. So a lot of people were still running them. And a lot of the things that got discontinued were either superfluous units, things that were just kind of didn't fit in the new world, and... Namely, a lot of special characters that just died during the end times. So there was really no function to still have them in Age of Sigmar. Lore-wise, it just didn't make sense. Now we're back in 2019, and a whole slew of additional model kits get discontinued. And a lot of people are very confused. And we get... A while after that, longer than some people really wanted, because it was a confusing time, we get the Cities of Sigmar Battle Tome. Where now we have dogs and cats living together, all of the craziness that is the, the Cities of Sigmar Battle Tome. We have all of these disparate forces which for quite a while in Age of Sigmar, the past two and a half years, these were forces that were definitely never working together, definitely never in armies together, that are now all in one book. But if we rewind back to the old world in the beginning of a, the Age of Sigmar story in the age of myth and then the age of chaos we understand why all of these factions got lumped together in cities of sigmar fundamentally what they are are the descendants of all of the peoples that sigmar had saved from the old world that's what the cities of sigmar really is in all of these forces that kind of are their own thing, in terms of the lore, they've, since the Age of Myth, 
they have been living together, working together, and keeping their own separate cultural and martial identity, but they're really still working together. Now, we have a couple of expe exceptions from that. We have the Daughters of Cain, who are now off with Marathi, worshipping a statue of Cain. We have the Sylvaneth, that kind of got pissed and went and did their own thing. And mysteriously, the High Elves have basically disappeared. There's a very small number of kits left in the High Elves. And it's basically Phoenix Temple. So Phoenix Guard, the two Phoenixes, the Anointed, and... Um, why do I feel like I'm missing one? But anyway, those units, and then a couple of other units that used to be part of the High Elves that got sent their own way into other factions, that's all that's left of High Elves. Virtually nothing from Dark Elves got discontinued. We had a few things from the Dispossessed that were discontinued, a couple of things from Ironweld Arsenal, a slew of heroes and a couple of units out of the Wanderers that got discontinued, and a whole one kit out of Free Guild that got discontinued. So now we have this new book, all of these different factions working together and we can mix and match them but in much the same way as we had early in age of sigmar before we had allegiance abilities you can use these factions together all you want but they don't necessarily synergize with each other all that well and that is a big thing that this series is really going to be about is from the perspective of a new player or from the perspective of an existing player trying to expand their forces, how do you make sense of all of this? How do you make these different things work together and synergize together in ways that make sense? So that's really where we are going from here. Hopefully this has kind of given people a good framework for why are all of these forces working together, how, what's the history behind them, and why they're all working together. How they could ever possibly be in the same book. Because really, it makes sense. They are all of the peoples that are just the good guys from the old world that Sigmar saved, repopulated the mortal realms with, and their loyalty as a result is to Sigmar. And they are your meat and potatoes, normal people going about their lives with their martial components being represented as separate subgroups in this battle tone. So, that's it for our story so far. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed what you watched. Subscribe for more content on Cities of Sigmar, particularly if you are a new player. I'm also going to be throwing in a lot of more advanced videos on Sigmar, uh, Cities of Sigmar for the more seasoned players. And don't forget also, we now have a Patreon with the link down below if you want to help support the channel and help us bring higher quality content to all of you, the viewer. Our pledge, as always, with our Patreon is 100% of the proceeds go directly back into the channel. So that's it for now, guys. We'll talk to you all later.